What's up, guys? I'm Kendall. This is EJ here, and we're, we're here to talk about, or we're here to give you our bold predictions for the 2019-2020 NBA season. Um, now, we have to preface this by saying that these predictions will be bold. You know, this isn't going to be a bold prediction. LeBron is going to win MVP this year. It's like, oh, great, you know, for the fifth time or whatever. They, like, no, these are at least yeah. mine. I can't. I don't know what EJ's are. but Yeah, we didn't tell each other what our bold predictions are. But I know one. mine are going to be things that, no one has really discussed okay and i think are possible i not likely i wouldn't bet money on it i wouldn't go to vegas and do it but i mean i think it's possible yeah i i, I think that i think that mines will be i think it'll be a fun discussion again i like that we haven't discussed it and i also think mines are ones that i haven't heard anyone say okay, so give me one ej give me your first bold prediction. okay first bold prediction the golden state warriors interesting will make it to the western conference finals Okay. Um, I think everyone's writing off the Warriors and they're doing it prematurely. There's a couple of reasons why I think that at the end they still will be a, a heavy threat to get to the finals. One, I think Steph Curry will have a monster season. I think I that they're going to have to find a way to, to rest him. they got to find a way to not overload him. But I think the one key thing, because I went back and forth on this all summer. I once thought, well, you know, Steph has been breaking down. Can he do that? But the one thing I did think about was, remember, Steph playing with KD, I think it might have added years to his career. He didn't have the load that he was carrying when he was taking them to 73 wins or battling LeBron in the finals by himself. Not by himself, but, you know, not with another, you know, top three player in the league. Um, So, yes, he went deep into the playoffs, and that takes a lot of wear and tear. But I think that the kind of wear and tear he's, he was taking before, he hasn't taken in three years. So I think you'll see Steph way more rejuvenated than maybe, we, than maybe most people anticipate. He'll get back into that MVP conversation. And Draymond Green's going to have, uh, I think, another big season too. I think a lot of people are looking at him now with a new contract and saying, all right, you got your money now. Um, KD's gone. Now Clay's going to be out for a while. What are you going to be capable of? And I think Draymond, before KD came around, was a, a just a jack-of-all-trades, just really unique player. I think he gets back to a little bit of that play we've seen yeah. from him in the past. And I think D'Angelo Russell is a huge, huge X factor for two reasons. One, he's a very good player. Um, he's a very good player. He's a really good scorer. I think him and Steph could be a fun backcourt. But the second thing is something that's totally different is what the Warriors could potentially get for D'Angelo Russell. I floated the idea multiple times. That I think Bradley Beal, D'Angelo Russell swap makes a lot of sense. I wouldn't be surprised that at some point in the season that happens. And now you're talking about going into the playoffs with Klay Thompson coming from an injury, Steph Curry, and then Bradley Beal as your your, your new Splash Brothers. Who, who's to say that team can't compete for a championship? <laughs> right, exactly. So they have the championship pedigree. They have an MVP caliber player, one of the greatest players at his position, and they have a, cal- uh, a high Hall of Fame caliber coach. The Warriors will be a threat. They'll get to at least the Western Conference Finals with all these other teams in the Western Conference trying to figure themselves out. Yeah, you know, I mean... That one definitely, I think, is not impossible. Um, for me, I, I guess they keep Russell. I have to see him play better in the postseason than he did last year. Fair. You know, I think the Philly kind of figured him out. When you're a pick and roll guy, that heavy pick and roll guy, sometimes it's easy to if you don't can't really do much else. It's going to be a lot different yeah, though they when they're spacing the floor with Steph Curry. Yes, it's a lot <laughs> Wait, different on that wing instead of yeah, you know Karis no different to Car- no dis Carol Zavert, Spencer Dinwiddie, great, great very Harris, good players, you know. but. That's a different animal. Or you're running pick and roll with Draymond Green as the potential role man. Yeah. yeah different situation. Yeah, yeah. Golden State should be, should be dangerous, should be fun to watch. Um, my first bold prediction, EJ, uh, we always ask who's going to be the, the next superstar to go, who's the next Kawhi, the next uh, Kyrie, the next, uh, you know, who got traded this offseason. Anthony Davis, mm-hmm. there's always a superstar that gets traded every offseason. Russell Westbrook, Chris Paul. The next guy for me, the next all-star player or next all-star caliber player to move, Devin Booker, will be traded from the Phoenix Suns this season. Um, I think that's a bold prediction given, you know, he's in his rookie deal or his, for his rookie extension, his max extension, had, I believe, three more years yeah. signed on to play in Phoenix. Um, he's 20, what, two years old, one of the youngest uh, players in the league, star player in the league, but... Obviously, obviously, with the video that went viral, him his frustrations about you know getting double teamed. How he, <laughs> he clearly teamed doesn't like when it happens season. in the regular season. Yeah, exactly. Because he and didn't want it happening in the at the twenty four seven. You know, you know, goal yeah, gym. Yeah, yeah, fitness, playing. yeah, planet fitness, planet fitness. Exactly. <laughs> he did. So, but he talked. He's he's expressed frustration by not making the playoffs. 
This was going into, this was after two years ago. He expressed, I'm never going to miss the playoffs again. Then they drafted DeAndre Aiden, uh, proceeded to be one of the worst teams in the league. Still. Like most people predict, they didn't have a point guard. It's not no surprise. This year, I didn't really love what they did in the offseason. I can't imagine them being better than 13th, 14th in the West this year. And I think it's going to get to a point where, you know, Booker, he really dipped a little bit last year. His production was still good, but his percentages went down, his three-point shooting went down. So I, I look at that and I say I think Booker might be a guy that, a surprise guy, could be on the move, team to look out for Minnesota. Um, it's funny. Uh, well, Booker, I think, definitely could be on the block. That brings me to my second prediction, uh, which is similar to yours, but it's a different player. I agree. This, this player mobility uh, era we have, superstars are just going to be traded every year. I, that's my opinion. I just think that we're at a point where, yeah, yeah. where star players... It's a trend that clearly isn't going away. Yeah, it's going to be guys that we don't expect. Yeah, star players are going to find their way gone, or teams are going to realize uh, this ain't working out. They probably went out anyway. Let's, let's get something for them, which is what I think will happen with this guy. Call Anthony Towns be the next star Similar. that I, is traded. Yeah, I think I think that's Booker my will second go to focus. Towns. Maybe Towns goes to Booker. Probably. But I just I think that I think the reason why I'm gonna say it, that Coffee Towns is actually the guy that will be traded next is because he's in a little bit of a different situation than Booker. Booker, the Suns are so bad that the Suns aren't on a on a clock to compete anytime soon. So in theory, you have young you have a young DeAndre Aiden. You have, uh, they, they add a lot of rookies that they've drafted that are older, but they still need some time to develop. To trade Booker now is just locking yourself into adding three or four more years to lottery written seasons. Where they could try to develop a core that they have with Booker and Aiton together. The problem, which, which it could be a very bright future with that. The problem with the T-Wolves, I don't think they have a bright future. They're, and not only do they not have a bright future, but they're in a position where they're not going to be able to get a high, high draft pick most likely because Towns is so good and because they can't get get rid of him. Wiggins is still on the team and he can play a little bit. Yeah. Um, they're not going to be a team that's going to be a bottom three, bottom yeah, four Yeah, they'll team. win some games. Right. So they don't, they're not going to be in those high draft picks. They're going to be stuck in the so-called no man's land. And it's going to be like, we have Towns. He's a great talent. But what are, what are we doing with him? Yeah. I think that he's a guy that they're going to look at and say, hey, if we put him on the block, we can get a massive haul who, for a player like, like this. Who says no? Phoenix trades Booker to Sacramento for Marvin Bagley. Who says no? And Buddy Heald. Marvin Bagley and Buddy Heald. Marvin Bagley and Buddy Heald? For Devin Booker. Uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I would say, Stuff one. I don't think anyone says no that's, there. I, I think that's a swap. I think that's a swap, man. I think that's a swap because I think, so, that, you know, obviously the Arizona ties with Bagley. Yeah, and yeah. then Buddy Heald is a, you know, not as good as Booker, but he's a, Ari- he's Phoenix, a confident player yeah. at the two that, that's your, that could replace Booker. In and that's that where I say Phoenix may say, you know, we just hit the reset button. And, and Sacramento is desperate for a star. And I don't have, know if he's the right star. They have one of the best young backwards in the league with Fox and Booker. So that's something I would I would look at. What about Indiana? I'll give you a trade then, real quickly. In, in Indiana, uh, Sabonis. Um, and Turner? Yeah, and Turner. For Towns. For Towns. Who said that? Another no one there. Minnesota thinks about, but I, you, the problem is you don't have a star. Unless, but they, but they, they got to rebuild anyway. Those guys would have to look really good this year. Like, ta- Turner. Young, I mean, Turner is looking good yeah, in, in it, Team USA. Fair enough. You know, if one of those guys emerges as a potential all star, I think. Real quick, what's the last? What's the last? Uh, the last one for me, EJ. We were talking about who could be a surprise MVP candidate. Okay, and this is going to be a little out there. Look out for my guy, Luka Doncic, to be a top five oh MVP God. candidate next season. It sounds crazy, you know. Luka Doncic is obviously a second year player, hasn't played an All Star game, so it, it sounds ludicrous. And I'm not saying he's going to win MVP. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. But Top five, I think if the Dallas Mavericks are better than what people expect and he's able to stay healthy, could he not do what Nikola Jokic did last year? Doncic seems like a guy that he already is talking about getting in better shape, you know, getting his jump shot right, getting his athleticism right. He he, he did all that stuff last year out of shape. So you're right. You know, yeah, like, no. you know, what is he going to do when he's in shape? And he claims... My jump shot wasn't right last year. His jump shot looked right to me a lot of times. His setback looked, jump shot was certainly okay. It was the money. I'm not saying Doncic is going to win MVP. I think he's a surefire all-star this season. And 
I agree. I, I could take that. You know, I him playing with Porzingis could be dynamic. I mean, if the Mavs are a top five team in the West, people are going to look at that roster and be like, there's not much besides him and Porzingis. He could end up being the catalyst. If he's averaging 23, 7, and 8, you know, or something along those lines, he might end up in the conversation. But Donch is, is a very good player. I, I just That's too much. I can't say I think it's a, too I think it I might think, be too I think, much, I think, but I can't see that's him why we're MVP. doing bold predictions. I get it, but yeah. I just think with MVPs, with the difference between him and Jokic, Jokic had a good team. Um, Dallas, yeah, it was the best team it was, in the West. It was deep. Dallas doesn't have a, a oh, good team that, yeah, to right, me. Right. Dallas, you have Porzingis, and really not much else. Yeah. So, so if you're talking about a team that could, uh, for MVP candidate, you, you know, like Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson's a nice player, yeah. uh, but, but, but I don't like as much as Jamal Murray or Gary Harris right. or even Malik Beasley, um, Paul Millsap. Then they had really, really good NBA players. That was great for Jokic to set everybody up, and make them all look good. Doncic is gonna have to really lift the lift the ability of a lot of these other guys, and then Porzingis, who's a star player, coming off a knee injury. So I, I can't I can't say he's a MVP candidate. I do think he makes the All Star game. That's that's gonna do it for this video. Um, you, you know you can follow all our videos at the New Generation at New Generation Media. Uh, we do New, New Generation Sports Talk where we talk about all these types of topics on you on uh, SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, um, and of course subscribe to New Generation Media here on YouTube. Uh, leave a comment below, like this video. That'll do it for EJ. I'm Kendall. Peace.